At the beginning of a meeting, a CEO remarked to his supplier counterpart, it is hard to ask you to do something for me when I don't know what you could do for me. And the reverse was true for the supplier CEO, of course. Being frank and clear about what you want in conversations with supplier CEOs will build trust and trigger an equally honest response. What investment would be required? What competences would need to be honed? What changes would need to be introduced to your practices? Have you ever thought about a certain technology? What kind of commitment would you be willing to make? How could you jointly make a difference in the industry? In this video, I will show you how to explore the unknown unknowns between your company and your suppliers. And toward the end of this video, I will show you how Apple is applying this principle for MacBooks and other product lines. Let's get started. Once you and the CEOs of your key suppliers have clearly articulated what each of you want, things can progress at a much faster pace with far more ambitious objectives. A meeting of minds can deliver spectacular results. Double savings, double quality, double speed, double innovation, half the risk, double strategic impact, year over year for the next three to five years and all of this agreed up front. Account management people and procurement people are still needed to work out the details, of course, but the effect is already there and their work focuses on formalizing it and making it sustainable. Obviously, you cannot have this type of conversation with each of your thousands of suppliers, but focusing on the big, the interesting and the promising suppliers should make this job manageable. And your suppliers are facing a similar challenge. They are separated from strategic business decisions by several layers of hierarchy and function. In particular, the situation of suppliers is made complex by a well-rehearsed stance between your procurement people and their account management people. Account management people with tactical KPIs, mostly revenue and price, are talking to procurement people with tactical KPIs, mostly cost reduction and continuity of supply. The dance keeps repeating itself on a quarterly or annual basis. Procurement people need to demonstrate the effectiveness by delivering savings. Account management people need to protect their profit margins. Procurement people conduct increasingly sophisticated analysis to prove that prices should be lower. Account management people cite external forces like increased labor cost and raw material shortages that drive up prices. In order to make their point, procurement people shift some shares to other suppliers. Account management people respond by developing additional customers. Disrupting this negative equilibrium between account management people and procurement people will require you to overcome the transactional zero-sum mindset in procurement. You can advance this by better understanding how your suppliers and the suppliers of your suppliers create value for you. Based on this understanding, you can intervene when it makes sense. If your suppliers have shortcomings in manufacturing, you send in your manufacturing people for help. If your suppliers have opportunities in working with sub-tier suppliers, you send in your procurement people. With this understanding, you can help suppliers to improve their operations. Working with your suppliers to help them improve their operations allows you to gauge their capabilities and their willingness. You would aspire an ever deeper relationship with ever fewer suppliers. Alternatively, you can use these insights to develop a challenger to a monopolistic supplier. In any case, you will provide strong incentives for growth to suppliers that are both capable and willing. With some of these capable and willing suppliers, you can take competition to the next level. Rather than accept the technological status quo and tinkering with incremental improvements, you would aim at jointly changing the rules of an entire industry segment. New product architectures, new manufacturing processes and products with breakthrough performance 
should be the ultimate outcome of you guiding supplier ecosystems. We can observe this very well at Apple. A traditional PC notebook chassis is made out of between 5 to 15 discrete plastic and metal components that are glued or screwed together. Should you have one of these traditional notebooks in reach, try twisting it. You will feel it yielding and hear it groan and screech. The reason lies in the dimensional tolerances every single part has. Combining up all the parts that make up the chassis multiplies these tolerances. Unhappy about this mechanical imprecision, Apple went searching for a solution and found it in CNC milling machines. These machines have a set of tools that they use to transform a piece of metal, aluminum in Apple's case, precisely to the specifications entered into a computer program. This was a fairly counterintuitive move for the high-tech industry with very high volumes, as CNC machining was originally meant for making small series of complex parts, for example, the main titanium structure of the F-35 fighter jet. By chiseling away from a solid block in a similar manner as a sculpture does his art, CNC machines are expensive and slow, but do not require part-specific tools. Notebook chassis are made in the millions. After experimenting with milling on what would become known as a unibody chassis out of a solid block of aluminum, Apple decided to roll this technology out. Foxconn and other suppliers that had previously proven themselves with Apple were selected as manufacturing partners. In the years 2010, 2011 and 2012, Apple purchased nearly the entire global output of CNC milling machines. It is highly unlikely that without Apple's guidance, its suppliers would have ever come up with CNC machining as a feasible way of making a chassis. The entire industry was geared toward making plastic parts with specific injection molding or die casting tools. What started as a relatively modest initiative to build a better chassis for notebook computers has grown impressively. Today, nearly all of Apple's desktop, laptop, smartphone, tablet and smartwatch models feature unibodies that are made by CNC machines. As an additional benefit, aluminum is an excellent heat conductor and makes getting rid of heat from the processor quite easy. This helps Apple to build ever thinner and more appealing products. Granted, the Apple example is a bit extreme and not all companies have Apple's financial muscle. But the thinking should be an inspiration for all companies out there. Let me know in the comments down below if you would like to discuss any aspect of this video and I will get back to you within 24 hours and if useful, I may even respond with a dedicated video. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next video. Peace.